Hi, I'm Jim. Um, welcome to my shop. Uh, it's a wonderful shop, i got to tell you. It's about got 11 feet by 21 feet on the inside. Um, i got lots of lights. i got lots of outlets. i got four 20 amp circuits in here. The, the garage itself has a 100, uh, 100 amp, 220 volt sub panel. So this is just, it's huge. You know, I mean, it's just wonderful compared to what I used to work in. And I've got a sliding door over here that um, lets me close off from the rest of the garage. So it gives me a six foot opening and it's weather strip and stuff. I made that. But one little problem I have is is my stuff to space ratio. I just got a lot of stuff in here because I have I have so much stuff in such a small in this space. Um, I try to keep things compacted and everything on wheels. So what I'm going to do here is all of this stuff you see on the floor here. Um, I've got a a jointer. I got a bandsaw. I got disc sander. I got a compound miter saw, drill press, and a bench grinder. All those are going to go on a single table that's on wheels that I can pull out and turn around as I have to to, um, to uh, you know, get to whatever tool I had. I had something similar to this before, um, but when I built this garage, all my stuff was outside under a tarp and a lot of things got ruined, like, and particularly the, the table that they were on. So I'm kind of recreating that, hoping to make some improvements. Um, I'll have outlets built into the table so that everything can plug into the table. I'll have a single cord to plug into the wall. I'll have a single port for dust collection for the sander and the joiner and in the miter saw and the uh, band saw. So if I can plug into one single port with my dust collector, that'll be a big improvement. So then I'm kind of tired of working on the floor with my. Uh, miter saw and things like that or having to pick it up and put it on the table saw every time I want to use it. So it's time to get this organized and uh, I thought you might find it entertaining and hopefully it'll be some uh, help to anybody else that has the same stuff to space ratio problem I have. You know, how can we get a lot of tools into a small space? So away we go. Okay, so I've developed a set of elaborate and incredibly detailed plans uh, based on measuring things sitting on the floor. So, you know, I mean, that thing is accurate within a foot at least. So, I'm going to cut the bottom piece out first. Uh, I want to get my air compressor underneath because that thing just takes up a lot of room. You can see it back there behind the saw. And it's kind of tall. You can see it's sticking up next to my table saw, that black space. Um, so I'm going to actually have to kind of drop this section down as far down as I can get it. So the whole thing, by time, you know, if I would just make a regular cabinet with casters and then some supports and then the space for the compressor and supports above that, I it'd just be way too tall. So I'm going to. Can I put a drop center in here for the compressor to roll into? And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, it's only wood. Okay, this piece is going to be the base for the air compressor, but right now I'm just using it to hold the compound miter saw because it's convenient. And I got some scraps of 1x6 and one chunk of 1x3 here. Uh, not that I need 1x6 or anything, but they're handy. So we'll cut these up to length so they fit across here. It's like uh, one of these 
is going to give me more than I need. Oh, I just went outside to grab something from my car. I gotta tell you, it's nasty out there. I didn't realize how cold it was getting. Uh, it's not bad in here, not bad at all. I just got two space heaters running, and you know this this uh, shop is pretty well insulated. You know, even the door and stuff is insulated. So anyhow, I'm gonna throw in a couple screws in each of these just to hold it in place, flip it over, and we'll put uh, uh, put some more screws in from the other side. Okay, so now I'll figure out how tall the sides have to be, put those on, and then we can set it into the rest of the base, and we can build the rest of the base. So these pieces will mount on the uh, sides of that drop for the uh, air compressor and attach it to the that cut out. Now we're going to have to, when I build it, we're going to have to put something in there so it doesn't uh, sag. Okay, I'll lob a couple screws into this to hold it, and then I can flip it over and uh, screw it down good where it's, you know, in the easy way, but this helps me line it up. Okay, I got it on the floor so it's reasonably flat, and uh, I'll get these screwed up, and then we can start building a frame underneath it. To hold the uh, it's too long. To hold the uh, casters and support the edges. Okay, so I'm putting some pieces on the perimeter here to make the frame and hold it. Stiffen it up just to go inside. The way, I, the way I've set this up here is uh, I'll be able to put a piece of plywood right here for the casters to mount onto. So I got a flat platform and it'll you know mount to all the corners and also be screwed into this piece here where uh, it is supporting the drop for the um, for the compressor so that so it doesn't sag that way as much, you know, because the casters help support it. So that's where I'm at. It should fit. I guess not. And there we go. I can screw that into place. another piece across here and screw it to this on there so that so this doesn't sag in the on this end and that should make it plenty stiff to hold that compressor under there. Okay so now I'm going to put a piece across here to kind of reinforce this. You know this cutout area here is going to be the weak part of this whole base so I'll put this across here keeps the uh, particle board from sagging. No particle board isn't the strongest stuff on the planet. Some screws and okay, so the caster is going to go here. So I'll put this piece of two by four in there to uh, 
give me something to screw to. And I gotta remember that they go this way. And then I'm gonna put a plate here, um, both to screw that to and to kind of tie these together. And it's gonna stick out about three quarters of an inch, not quite. But uh, so when I put the sides on, when I put the legs on, it'll it'll the leg will lean on that and same thing in the front so I can just mark that that's as far as that goes that let's screw that in way that goes. And I put a line underneath so I can screw it to the top when I get it flipped over. I think the main thing is this plate here is going to kind of tie these together and you know make this in, into a box. Uh, so that uh, kind of stiffen this corner up because I'm worried about it flexing here at this joint. Okay, there's tire number two. Two more and we should be able to flip this thing right side up permanently. Or stand it on end to get it out of the way while we build the next level, more likely. Yeah. Okay, so I want the tire to sit, or the caster to sit about there. That means that the that screw is going to go about there. That's the center line. Now, about, uh, about there. I want my 2x4 to go. darker I guess I don't need to so I'll need to mark it off here okay so I'll go whack that off 45s and be back in a sec That should Yeah, that'll work.
And that's the last of those. So we should be able to uh, set it on its feet. Okay, as an engineering professor, you know, it's important to do scientific testing. So here it is. Um, Pretty solid there. Feeling it flex. Yeah, this is flexing right here. I can see that. If I know how to fix that, that won't be a problem. It's probably actually bending less than I would have thought. If it'll hold my lard ass, it'll hold that air compressor pretty good. Cool. So we'll build the top. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll make this two parts.